cataractcoach.com should a resident implant a multifocal IOL. Now, this resident has done less than 50 cases. Is he ready for a multifocal lens? So a young doctor sent me this video, and he asked for my opinion on how the case is and what can he do to improve. I said, sure, I'm happy to feature it, and we'll share with our viewers, and we can all kind of collaborate together. We're showing the video three times at normal speed. You can see the surgeon is sitting superiorly. There is the speculum. Lid margin is draped and covered as appropriately. Eyelid, eyelashes and lid margin are sequestered. That's very good. Let's take a look, see the technique. Here comes a cystotome in the right hand, going through that para. Now, you know, a multifocal lens is a little bit of a different creature compared to a monofocal lens. Well, why is that? It's really intolerant of residual refractive error or residual astigmatism. A multifocal lens performs best when the patient has achieved basically a plano outcome with minimal or no astigmatism. So here comes the rexus, very nicely done, all with a cystotome through the side port. This is pretty good for less than 50 cases, I'll tell you that. That's really good. So you got a rexus done with just a cystotome through the side port. Now got the lights turned back on. Let's see what else we're going to get going here. Let's see here's the main incision, moving the speculum over a little bit. And let's see the incision. It's pretty good, actually. I like the incision. I like the incision. Let's see what you do for hydrodissection now. And going in here with some hydrodissection. Not too dense of a cataract, which is a good thing. And let's see hydrodissection again. There's the nucleus. Yeah, reasonable amount of nuclear sclerosis there. Nucleus spins. That's great. I like that. More viscoelastic going in. Let's see the nucleofractus technique. What are we going to be doing here? Now, we keep the resident videos anonymous. Sometimes I have no idea who the resident is. And sometimes the resident will attach, you know, his or her name to it. And we know, but even then, even if it's a fantastic resident case, when you're a resident, the cataract coach rule is you're anonymous. Let's see now. Faker probe going in the eye. Oh, find that incision. There we go. And let's see the technique cleaning up the intercortical material. And phaco probe, what do we need to chop it? Buzz into the probe, maybe? And the speculum is kind of, look at the speculum all over the place. Speculum is popping off the eyelid. What are we doing here? Oh, groove down the middle. Okay, you got to fix the speculum. So here's my point. In this case, the resident is going to be putting in a multifocal lens. You don't even have the speculum straight. You're, look how you're operating with that speculum there. And you're saying, how come the resident can't see this? Well, sometimes you get such focus on just that groove that you're not seeing anything else, even a couple millimeters away, like that speculum. So, okay, groove down the middle. Yeah, you've cracked it. Prop getting a crack here. They're going to try some chop. But look at the speculum. The speculum's over the cornea. Now, come on. Other question, okay, you're adjusting it finally. Okay. The other question is, where's your tending? Where's the other hand squirting the eye, squirting the cornea? Is this really a resident case? Usually a resident case, if you've done less than 50 cases, there's an attending involved, a professor, who's sitting there next to you, scrubbed in, and at a minimum is squirting the cornea. And I'm not really seeing that. So it makes me wonder. But regardless, again... Getting the nucleus out, you're doing a reasonable job. I'd wish the eye was in primary a little bit better. And take your time here. There's no rush. The cataract's not going anywhere. Take your time. Removing that is pretty good. And now here comes epinuclear shell. Maybe do it with the, with the eye probe. So now let's take a look here. Actually, the incision, now look, it's kind of long. When you're sitting superiorly, remember, superior position for the incision the superior limbus is closer to the visual axis than the temporal is. The advantage of the temporal incision is it's farthest from the visual axis. So this incision, superiorly, actually look, because it's a longer tunnel length, is encroaching uh, not too far away from the visual axis. So here's a bimanual cortical cleanup with the eye probe. Now, this is pretty good. Again, this doesn't look like 50 cases to me. When you do a multifocal, trifocal, one of these specialty lenses, again, you have to hit your target. And I found very few residents in more than 20 years of teaching who have kept track of the surgeries they've done and say, hey, here was the Iowa calcs. Here's what we're aiming for. Here's what I actually ended up with. I found very few. Or to say, here's my surgically induced astigmatism, my SIA. I've measured the pre-op Ks on this many patients, and then I measured the post-op Ks, and I kind of know what's going to happen with my incision. My incision is going to cause X amount of flattening at that meridian. Yeah, I wish you'd do that, but you're not doing that. Not at less than 50 cases. Anyway, you want to be a better surgeon, I promise I got great material for you on cataractcoach.com. 
Yes, you have to leave YouTube for just a moment. That site has such great material for residents, including a free PDF book, a 25-part curriculum series. There's so much you can learn there. And listen to our podcast. It's the top podcast in all of ophthalmology for a reason. It teaches you things you wish you knew. Here we go. Delivering the lens, going inside the eye. Nice and easy. Let's get that in the bag. And here we go. There it is. See, it's a multifocal lens. You see the concentric rings on the optic. Now, this is not a lens that I recognize. may not be available in the USA. So getting that, you better get that in the bag. So getting that lens pushed in the capsule bag. It's got these four haptics. You want to get those in the bag? There you go. You also need to center up this lens very nicely. So to have success with the multifocal lens, of course, you need the appropriate patient with no other ocular pathology. But you need to have a patient who you can hit the target with. Hit the Plano target, maybe a plus a quarter, plus a half even. But you got to also hit the astigmatism. Don't leave more than a half diopter of untreated astigmatism. And have you really watched all that? So in this case, yes, you're doing great. For the number of cases that you claim to have done 50 or less, fantastic. But even little things like the speculum popping out during the case, not keeping the eye in primary, I would focus on those tasks first and really elevate those skills and then worry about doing a multifocal lens because I think you'll be a much better surgeon and then you'll get much better outcomes with those tough multifocal lenses. And again, check out that podcast. It's the top podcast all of ophthalmology. We give away all the secrets to success in your future. Check it out.